Hi, welcome to part 3 of the Azure DevOps REST API video. So in this video, we will see how to get the uh, work item details uh, for each sprint uh, from Azure DevOps REST API. So here we will show the details of work items on a web page in the .NET Core application. So there are two ways to get work items. One is by using the work items API with the ID parameter. But here you have to pass the IDs of the work items in the URL. And another way is through work item relations data. So for this, we can use this URL where we append the work items to this print iteration URL. And then we get the work item relations data in the JSON format. And in the work item relations data, we can see that we get the work item with IDs for each sprint. And then to get the individual work item, we will just call this URL and get the data in this format. So here you can see that we got the work item name and work item state and other details about the work item. So we will implement this now. So now let's fetch the work items. So here, as you can see, I have two sprints and in each sprint, I've added test work items. Let's fetch these work items and display it in our application on the sprints page. And if you haven't watched my part one and part two of the Azure DevOps REST APIs video, please check them to understand the existing code. I have added the links of both the videos in the description below. Now let's start implementing the code changes. So we will display the work items as part of this print data. So I'll add a method here to get the work items. We will pass the sprint entity object uh, here. So for each sprint, we will fetch the work items. Now let's implement this method in the Azure DevOps manager class. Now for authentication to the work items API, I will use the same format that we have used earlier. So I will pass the token and the credentials. And then we will iterate through each sprint entity object and for each sprint, we will fetch the work items. So for this, I will first get the sprint from the sprint entity object. And for each sprint, we get the sprint item URL uh, and we will append slash work items to that URL. So this will return the work item relations in the JSON format like this. Now I will just add the default headers. Let's add the HTTP client first. So here we will get the list of work item relations. And pass the work items URL that we have constructed above and we will fetch the results. And if the response is success, let's create a JSON object here to store the JSON data. Here we will use the same approach that we have used earlier to create the entity class from the JSON result object. So for that, I will just uh, run this and debug this application. Before that, we have to call this method in the get sprint data so that we can debug this and get the JSON object from the work items URL. So before returning the sprint entity object, I will call this method. And from the sprints CSHTML page, we are already calling the get sprint data method. So I'll run this. So here you can see we got the work item relations data. I'll copy this and paste it here. Format the document. So here we got the work item URL for each of the work item for this print one. Now let's create the work item relations entity class. So I'll stop this. Add a new model. Name it work item relations entity. 
select this and go to edit paste special paste json as classes i will rename some of the items so we'll rename the root object to work item relations entity also instead of an array we will use a list object here let's import the namespace and for links i will use work item links similarly for self i will use work item self and i'll rename the other properties and classes as well now in the azure devops manager class let's deserialize the json object and convert it into work item relations entity class so let's create an object of work item relations entity i will use the custom json helper that we have already created earlier pass the entity class name here and the json result as a parameter now we have to iterate through the work item relations array and fetch the data of individual work item through this url so here i will iterate through the work item relations list from the work item relations entity object we just have to call the url so that url we can get from item.target.url so this url property is coming from the target class which is a part of work item relations entity which is mapped to this target object in the json response now again we will fetch the work item json data Uh, we have to again convert the json result to the entity object for work items so i'll run the application again so here as you can see we got the work item data for the work item which has id 3 so again copy this so here as we can see that the work item is related to sprint 1 and for the name of the work item we get the property system dot title similarly for work item state we get the property system dot state and there are other properties denoting the work item details so let's create an entity class for this json object again add a model class go to paste special paste json as classes i will rename some of the classes and properties for the fields property i will add the json property data annotation to map this property to the json object let's import the namespace for data item now let's map the work item state work item type and work item title property to their corresponding json properties through data annotations so i'll use json property here also we will add a sprint name in the work item entity class to keep a relation between work item and the parent sprint object now deserialize this json result into the work item entity class so create a work item entity object again use the custom json helper and pass the work item json result let's populate the sprint name property so we will get the sprint name from the sprint item object now to add all the work items as child object for this sprint entity i will add one more property into this sprint entity class so let's add public list of work item entity name it sprint work items and in the method get work items for sprint let's populate that object for sprint entity print work items dot add add the work item entity object so now we will be able to iterate through this print work items on the css html page and then display the data so for this we have to do some changes on the sprint css html page also so instead of sprints we will fetch this print entity object directly here so that we can get this prints 
as well as work items both. So I'll populate the sprint entity object, which we are already returning from the get sprint data. And on the CSHTML page, I'll make the UI changes. I'll just adjust the width of the columns and add one more column for work item details. And in the model, we will get the sprint entity. Sprints. Let's add another for each loop to display the work item details. This pan to show the work item name and work item state. We get the work item name in the system title property, which is under fields JSON object. So here we have the system title, which is under fields JSON object. Similarly, we will display the work item state. Add a TD around the for each loop. And now let's run the application. Go to sprints, continue. So here, as you can see that we got the work items for each sprint, but we got the wrong data. So we just have to add a filter based on the sprint name. So in the sprint CS HTML page, we will add the sprint name filter in the work item entity. We have added the sprint name property so we can filter uh, using this property. So here we can use where sprint name equals to item dot name. So item dot name is the name of the parent sprint object. Let's run the application again. So now we got the correct data. So for the sprint one, we had two work items and for sprint two, uh, we only had one work item. So this is how we can display the work items data through Azure DevOps REST API. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel.